All right. Did you look at the notes at all? I didn't get a chance to, no. Okay. Basically, I think we should just go over all of the shit that's happened since we haven't been podcasting. Okay. So, so like Warp it, Tour coming back. All that yeah, Warp Tour. I think maybe mentioning the Jane's Addiction thing. Uh, Fire Festival. Yeah. I guess they've got a date. Dave Grohl fathering some child. Yep. And uh, the Oasis reunion, of course, because we got to toot our own horn on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've uh, been calling that. And then, I don't know, maybe we could talk about the dashboard in, in our own words. Did you listen to those at all or no? I haven't had a chance to. Okay, so we, we don't have to mention those then. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, the last new thing I listened to was the Blink stuff, to be honest. I listened to the Blink stuff? I feel like I listened to the Blink stuff. It definitely came out. Like, I remember listening to it. Yeah. I don't think I was blown away by the Blink stuff. Clearly honestly. not. Uh, and I don't even know. Do you know what songs they were? It was like the last like six or seven songs, I guess. I don't know because oh, I tacked a couple okay. on at the end of the first one. So yeah. I couldn't remember which ones got tacked on. So what what was new, what wasn't. Yeah. Was just, yeah. I guess let's just kind of let's just kind of start. Let and then we'll kind of go into that. Well, right. I mean, What's I up, don't everybody? Think we have positive things to say about it. So. I I'm not. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unplugged with. Tyler Winters and John Pierman. We're back after a long hiatus. Mm-hmm. Really just needed a mental break uh, from everything. You know, doing this week after week for, I don't know, four or five years, however long this thing's been going on for, four years. Um, plus, you know, my kids have been involved in so many sports lately. Like, I I just haven't had time to even think about the podcast. So it's been kind of nice not having to think about it because I could kind of just focus on those things. You hate it's been me. fun, but it's been tiring. Um, but I figure Why do you hate me. And yeah, John and I had some issues. No, love me. That's, that's not true. Um, it's just Why been won't busy. You love me. Oh, I love you, buddy. You know okay. that. Um, you know so, I can't say it, but I feel it too. <laughs> but there's been a lot that's happened over the last few weeks. Um, we've got. Uh, uh, it's been reported that Warp Tour 2025 is going to happen. Dave Grohl just fathered a baby outside of his 21-year marriage. Uh, Oasis has reunited. Got to talk about that. Linkin Park has reunited. Uh, Jane's Addiction. Controversially. Yeah. Jane's Addiction recently, like this weekend, I guess, uh, they've reunited, but uh, they're on tour, and there was an onstage spat with uh, Perry Farrell, I guess, threw punches at Dave Navarro on stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, which ended the the show abruptly, and then also Fire Festival Two is a go, but apparently there's no bands uh, that are scheduled just yet. So, well, we want to talk about all these things. So, um, I guess we just get started. John and I just started talking about uh, there's a couple of new songs that are coming out. One from Dashboard Confessional uh, featuring Boys Like Girls. I got a an advance on that. John hasn't listened to it yet. I think any, but I just want to mention. I think anybody who's a Dashboard Confessional fan is going to like this song. It's good. Uh, then I got an advance on "In Her Own Words," which John, I was texting you about it. Uh, they have a new song coming out. Uh, God, what's the name of it? Do I still have it up? Oh, good. It's uh, called "I Think It's Time." I think it's going to come out on the twentieth. Uh, I think that Dashboard Confessional song is going to come out on the twentieth. But I think it's time from "In Her Own Words." is a banger certified banger just trust me on that um there are some like electronic sounding drums uh, at the start and then i think it comes like after the first chorus but that's it um and i think you know how you guys i think you guys know how john and i feel about electronic drums we're not a fan of it but the song gets big uh throughout uh and i think Anybody who likes the sound of real sounding drums is going to like this tune. And it, and it's really, it's no departure from what they've, you know, what in her own words has given us uh, in the past. So uh, they're, they're on par with what they've done in the past and they have new members or they lost members. And I think there is a lot of people that were kind of um, wondering, you know, are they going to lose their sound? They haven't lost their sound. So um I listened to this song probably 10 times after uh, receiving it. I My love God. it. Um, also, <laughs> we were just talking about uh, uh, before 
you know, starting the show, Blink-182 had released some songs uh, since we've been gone. Um, I can't remember what the names of those songs were. Well, I mean, I could look them up for you. Okay, if, yeah, if you want to look them up. I do know, though, I wasn't really impressed with what had come out. Um, no. Uh, the lyrics are just very subpar, and I think that's what kind of does it for me. I think... Tom and Mark, they you know they execute well. I think on songs for the most part. I like the music. I I will not dog the the actual music, but the lyrics I felt like for the songs could just be better. Like it doesn't really sound like they tried, and maybe that's why they're B sides. I don't uh, know. Can't go back every other weekend. <laughs> everyone everywhere. If you never left, one night stand. Take me in. Yeah. Uh. Those. Yeah. Okay. And I All I can't. That. I can't speak for each song individually because I, I. I mean, I listened I, to some. I I think I I think I've got all. I know I listened to all of them, and I don't think I was really impressed. They're fine Blink songs, but they're album fillers. I guess that's how I would categorize. Yeah, I mean, them. they sound like stuff that wasn't good enough to make the. You know, that's yeah, what exactly. Besides, tend to be so. Yes. I will 100% agree there. But, man, it's just the lyrical content that just – and I know I've said before that I'm more of a, a a a lyric guy second. Like, I like melody. I like how the song makes you feel like the music makes you feel. But I feel like the lyrics actually stood out to me on this for whatever reason, and I just was not impressed. And I feel like it just – eh, it drops the song a rung, I guess, for yeah. me. That's yeah, I, I mean, uh, again, uh, I, I think a lot of people shared the dislike of the the drum sound and the overproduction, and I kind of agreed. It was just, it just sounds like it's, it like hurts my ears. Yeah, it's just not as I don't even know how to how to say it. It just doesn't like you try to make everything sound so crisp, and yeah, it just end up. And we could kind of we could talk about that too because I've been listening to a lot of Oasis lately, and you know as a lot of people have because they, they mentioned their reunion. So I was going back through their back catalog, and, man, I have been sleeping on Oasis. Like, I've always been a fan of Oasis. I've, I've loved the hits. I've, main, I've mainly been a hits. Like, I just listen to the hits, and they've mm -hmm. got a lot of hits. But, man, I've been listening to the back catalog, and, Jesus, this band is, is great. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought they were great just based off the hits, but holy shit. Um, and to kind of go back to the crispness of Blink 182's sound, I was listening to I think it was Champagne Supernova again, at one of the hits, and there's like plosives throughout Liam singing, like the yeah. like you can hear it, um, and they kept those in. And I know we've we've talked about inconsistencies in songs, like recorded songs, studio recorded songs in the past, and those inconsistencies are what really makes you feel the song it makes it more genuine more i don't know it more alive i guess and you don't really get that with music nowadays i feel like and i feel like you know when it's studio driven nowadays everything's got to be perfected and i feel like that diminishes the quality of a song yeah i yeah um uh, you know the the sound of fingers on a fretboard or right yeah you know just the idea of every snare head not sounding the exact same. It's like, why does everything have to be uniform and perfect? And... Exactly. Because, I mean, you don't get that when you listen to live music anyway. Like, mm -hmm. if you listen to, I want to say, if you listen to any of the Green Day songs, like, prior to American Idiot, I'm not a big American Idiot fan, so maybe American Idiot too, but you can hear Billy Joe's, you know, fingers sliding across fretboards. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you don't hear that anymore and i know a lot of younger people probably are like well i don't want to hear that or who cares but man it yeah. really does add a lot to a song i really wish musicians artists would kind of go back to that i don't know how they're recording nowadays but i just feel like the quality of music has just it's diminished over time mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're old guys talking about music no, we but... definitely are uh, giving off those vibes but yeah yeah it's just you know, why does it have to sound like everything? You know, yeah. And then once once everybody starts doing that, then everything sounds the same. Exactly. I mean, what's the point of that? Exactly. It's that damn Lincoln Park's full. Yeah. Transition. What do you, yeah. What do you think of the Lincoln Park uh, reunion? Were you much of you weren't much of a Lincoln Park fan anyway? Um, were you? No, they're okay. 
I respect like the albums that they made, like the first couple records that they yeah, made. Yeah, sure. Um, but like that's another band that was like extremely polished and like everything perfect. Yeah, they might have been one of the first ones. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, they're a they impressed me what they did in the studio for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, um, and I like Meteora and Hybrid Theory, but I don't. You know, Chester kind of makes that band to me. So yeah, it's going to be somebody come in is kind of odd. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool though that they chose a girl, Emily Armstrong. She sounds like she holds her own, but I mean, it's like it's hard not to compare this era of Lincoln Park to the old. I know they just kind of want to move on, which I respect that. Sure. Um, you know, that's a band decision. And so it it'll just be kind of interesting to see how this legacy or this era, I guess, of Lincoln Park um kind of compares. I don't I just feel like you can't compare it, but again, it is Lincoln Park. It's one band and there are two different eras, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. It seems like the fans are excited, though, from what I've read. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. Um, I think some people were upset because of her affiliations prior to the band and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess she was friends with that one dude Masterson. from that, yeah, that yeah. 70s show. Um, but but again, you know, I I try to put myself in her shoes, and it's like if I had a friend, you know, you want to believe your friend, but, you know, then she sat through the court hearings and found out some more stuff, and then she backed away. So, I mean, you gotta, you can't get on her, I don't think, for, for that. Uh, also, I guess she has signs, or uh, she has ties to Scientology, maybe, like her parents were Scientologists mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, that's but, not her fault. No, that's, that's not her fault, and she's not saying that she's in Scientology. And you know what? Even if she is, I mean, I, I feel like Scientology is weird, I guess, for the record. I, I'll say it. I think it's weird. But You're she weird. might be a good person. I mean, who knows? We don't we don't know the whole story. So hmm. um, everybody just back off and let's just enjoy the music, whatever yeah, they release. Calm down. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, also, I guess what we need to see what happens is with this Dave Grohl thing. Uh, so <laughs> news just came out of nowhere this week. Mm-hmm. Dave Grohl posts this statement that he's fathered a baby outside of his 21 year marriage. And I'll just, let's just read what uh, he said here. Uh, Posted this on the Instagrams says, I've recently become the father of a new baby daughter born outside of my marriage. I plan to be a loving and supportive parent to her. I love my wife and my children, and I am doing everything I can to regain their trust and earn their forgiveness. We're grateful for your consideration toward all the children involved as we move forward together, signs off Dave. That was a little surprising uh, this week. You know, Dave Grohl has this uh, has this presence about him. He's he's mm-hmm. known for being this like lovable dude. He's probably the most lovable figure in all of rock and roll. Uh, gotta go down as one of the most lovable in history, at least what maybe if? up until this point. Uh, dude, what do you think this does for his legacy? Because, I mean, and again, well, I do want to say, we don't know the whole story. Sure. We don't know what Dave's marriage is like. We don't know if it's like an open marriage. We don't know if his wife's a total cunt. We don't know if she's a Jesus. total... Well, hold on. We don't know if she's a totally nice person. Like, she could be, yeah, like, I've one of the coolest her. people. Like, we don't know. We don't know what's happening in, in his marriage. We don't know if there's any anything like that. So you kind of have to hold a little bit of reserve. But what do you think this does for his legacy? Because he's known as this, like, awesome dude up until this point. Well, I think most people, if you think about it, you know, you're a rock star, you're traveling. You know, this shit happens. Yeah. Um, in that lifestyle. But uh, he never really gave off those vibes. So right. I think, um, you know, if it's, if it's somebody, like, from fucking Motley Crue or something, you're like, yeah. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't um, don't get involved with those guys. But right? yeah, I mean, he's in a popular rock band for, you know, it's not a complete shock to me that something like that happened. But, uh, you know, one of the smartest things he did was release it the same day as the presidential debate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to get something lost in the news cycle. Yeah. I wonder if it in there. certainly that was a planned PR thing mm-hmm. uh, for sure. Um, try to get out in front of it and then try to bury it uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And, and the fact that, you know, Dave Grohl, he's been a rock star his whole life. 
you know i mean he was young when mm -hmm. nirvana hit and so like he's been on the road his whole life and that's not to make any excuses by any means but uh when you're growing up on the road that's not the way to really you know grow up mm -hmm. you know I, I i think we could all agree there but man that's got to be so tough for his daughters uh because i think he's got three daughters Something like that. His wife. I know one I, of them. They're saying one of them was like currently on tour with him or something. Yeah, I think Violet uh, sings backup for him. or something. I yeah. think. So kind of crazy. I, I don't. That one. That news kind of hurt because, you know, for me, like I said, Dave Grohl's known as this lovable character and awesome dude. And it's like, and you know, he'd been married for a long time. It, he seems like a big family guy. And then all of a sudden this news comes out. It's like, ugh, it's kind of, kind of, kind of gross. Icky. And it is. Like, why couldn't he? And he's kind of, I mean, he's pretty old. Dude. Yeah, he's, I think he's 50 and he's impregnated somebody. We don't know how old she is. Um, but, but, you know, and then it goes on. Then you, your mind starts to wander. It's like, you know, this probably wasn't a one-time incident. So it's been probably going on for a while yeah, if you're playing and, the numbers but then again we don't know the whole story so i think everybody needs to relax this is dave and his family's life but uh it does kind of sting for the fans i think still sure you know yeah but i th i mean how long are people going to hold on to it yeah i mean people this hit, it'll it'll move on i feel like I dave feel like we've already stopped hearing about it so <laughs> yeah I feel like Dave and his PR team will be able to figure out a way for people to forget about this and everybody move on. But you really just hope that the family's okay. There's a lot of a lot that needs to happen there for sure. Yeah. Healing. All right. What else, John? Healing. So we've got Dave Grohl. Let's talk about the Oasis reunion because, you know, we love to toot our own horn on this podcast. And I know I've been calling this Oasis reunion happening. I, I didn't. I didn't know that it would happen so soon, but I know I alluded to it because it seemed like they were they had been getting along, Noel and um, Liam Gallagher, for a while. Like, all of a sudden, they stopped bickering, and then they Liam stopped talking about the Oasis reunion, like a, a potential for an Oasis reunion, trying to get uh, Noel on board and all this stuff. It just seemed a little bit quiet, and now... We got news. The Oasis reunion's happening. They're having a tour. They're doing a UK and Ireland tour. There's a hint of a US tour in the works. Yeah. Whispers. Whispers. North American yeah. tour, yeah. Yep. Which I I have to say, I'm probably going to want to go to that. And dude, you know what I was thinking? Oasis at the Sphere in Las Vegas would be so cool. That would be cool. Can you imagine the imagery that they could come up with? They have so many different types of songs, especially for like Champagne Supernova with all the oceany water sounds. Like, yeah, and when their brothers vibe. inevitably get in a fist fight, you're going to see it on that giant screen behind them as it's happening. Yeah, let's talk about that. What are the odds? What chances do you give of a breakup during the UK Ireland tour? I'm, I think it's going to be done before the fifth show. <laughs> you do you re like honestly you think that? Or are you trying to be yep. funny? Like nope. you, you? Oh my god! Fifth I show. think what fifth you, show. You think the fish show? Okay. Yeah. I think they're going to finish it out. I think the guys are uh, have it's a lot of money. I think they put their odds behind them. Yeah, dude. That's the thing too. Ticketmaster's dynamic pricing model took effect, of course. I think the show started out at 135 and then all of a sudden went up to about $400. Um there were I thought I read there were like 500,000 people in queue online. So when fine when people were finally able to get through expecting to pay 135 the dynamic pricing model shot up to around $400 and all these fans have to make a game time decision cuz they only hold tickets for what like 10 15 minutes tops I think when you're in queue like mm -hmm. trying to check out so you have to you think you're maybe buying you know let's say $270 worth of tickets for two people so you're then you're well, I mean, plus you fees. Plus fees. You're and then you're 400 there anyway. Right. But then you're forced to pay $800 for those two tickets, then plus fees. Mm -hmm. And you're probably close to $1,000 checking out. I mean, dude. I mean, but also, at that point, man, you probably have to expect the dynamic pricing model to take effect. So you got to be prepared for that. Um, got to be ready. Yeah. Uh, it That's it's crazy. 
But I think they're going to finish out the tour, man. I, I think they're going to do the North America tour. Apparently, there's a new album that's already recorded and done. Well, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. That they've been able to do that quietly. Yeah, under everybody's, you know, behind everybody's backs and all that. But I guess at one point, Noel's band was, or he was writing music for his band. And then in one interview, he said that he's just going to scrap it and he wants to do something more angsty rock. And that was probably alluding to Oasis music because that's basically what Oasis music is. It's very so, yeah. 90s. Yeah. 90s so, angst. So what, what do you, how do you, what are your thoughts on the Oasis reunion? Are you, I'm, I'm excited sure you, for him. I, I'm sure I you weren't it, shocked, but. No, I want it to go well, but. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I'm prepared for a disaster. You think so? Do you oh, think yeah. it's going to go down like eventually like a the Jane's Addiction thing over the weekend? You know, those brother relationships, uh, they're tough. Yeah. Uh, not not me personally, but, uh, you know, you look at bands like the Kinks that have those similar issues and they, you know, they don't, they haven't reconciled either, you know? It, it took uh, the Black Crows a while to reunite mm -hmm. too. They they didn't you get know, along. Uh, the Just the dynamic of being in a band plus the family on top of it, it, it can be a lot. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Um but I think I think they've put their past behind them. You know, there's right. al there was always speculation once Noel got a divorce from his wife. Liam had nothing but bad things to say about his ex about Noel's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. She's the one that got in between the band. Oh, Yoko. Yeah, like he, she was the Yoko. And once there was speculation, they you know, reporters were writing since she's gone Maybe a reunion could happen, and look look at us now. That here just happened are. like last year. So here there we, we are. are. Now we're here. All right. So I hope they do there. not break up. But it looks like Jane's Addictions reunion could be that 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 one might be breaking up on the rocks. Uh, yeah. So this weekend, as I said at the top of the show, uh, lead singer Perry Farrell was clearly inebriated during the show and all of a sudden went after Dave Navarro, who didn't seem, at least from the video, did not seem to antagonize or instigate a fight well, in mean, any way. I mean, just his face, though. Perry's I can or understand Dave's? Uh, either one. <laughs> like, you just want to attack it? Sure. Okay, I get you. I'll, I see I'll fight you both of them right now. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look good. Apparently, people were saying, too, that, like, Perry was pounding wine before the show, which obviously is... You would think, you would think with as much Makes experience as he's had being a front man in a band, in a band like Jane's Addiction, that it's not a good recipe for a good show, right? You Generally, no. You don't get inebriated, in intoxicated before a show. Uh, so some people are wondering if he's not sober anymore. Uh, well, clearly he's not sober anymore. Um, I guess Perry's wife came out and tried to, like, explain the situation from her view which what i think woman. was was wrong like like clearly perry needs some help it looks like um i don't know can we should i read what she said sure okay i mean love is just blindly defending your spouse no matter what that's what yeah, she love is that's that's that seemed to be what she was trying to say so okay this is from Consequence. They wrote all this out. Uh, they said, or she said, she posted this on Instagram, I think. She said, rather than speculating, I thought to post a first-person account of what happened on stage with Jane's Addiction last night in Boston. Um, she says, who? Perry Farrell and Dave Navarro. How? Clearly, oh, there God. had been a lot of tension and animosity I take it between back. the Don't members. Read it. <laughs> the magic that made the band so dynamic, well, the dy... The dynamite was lit. Perry got up in Dave's face and body checked him. Uh, she says, why? Perry's frustration had been mounting night after night. He felt this is where I think she's just making excuses. Does the top of this say my first essay? And is it written in crayon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she goes, Perry's frustration had been mounting night after night. He felt that the stage volume had been extremely loud and his voice was being drowned out by the band. Perry had been suffering from tinnitus and a sore throat mm. every night. But when the audience in the first row started complaining up to Perry, cussing at him that the band was planning to or was playing too loud, 
and that they couldn't hear him, Perry lost it. First of all, what fans are going to cuss out the lead singer because they can't hear him singing? What? And I don't if it's believe so loud, that. How could he hear them? Right, exactly. Then she and said, if, "Why would they be playing loud if he had tinnitus?" Exactly. Why doesn't he wear like an earpiece? You know, like to kind of stop that tinnitus. Yeah, Perry. Come on. So, Girl so she's she's clearly making up uh, excuses for him. But she, then she says, "When the band started the song Ocean before Perry, I think everybody was, knows when <laughs> before Perry was ready and did the count off." The stage volume was so loud at that point that Perry couldn't hear past the boom and the vibration of the instruments, and by the end of the song, he wasn't singing. He was screaming just to be heard, and that's when he ended up going after Dave Navarro for some reason. Uh, and then she said, so who won the fight? She said, why, Eric Avery, of course. While Dave was keeping Perry at arm's length to de-escalate the situation, Dan rushed over to de-escalate as well by holding Perry back. Dave walked away to take his guitar off. Eric walked up to Perry upstage in the dark behind Dan, put Perry in a headlock, and punched him in the stomach three times. Kevin, crew member with a long with long hair, pulled Eric away. Then Eric nonchalant walked off to the front of the stage to apologize to the audience for the show ended early. She said the aftermath was Dave still looked handsome and cool in the middle of a fight. Perry was a crazed beast for the next half an hour. He finally did not calm down, but did break down and cried and cried. Eric, well, he either didn't understand what de-escalation meant or took advantage of the situation. You either break down and cry or you broke down and cried. God damn it. (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. So that was from. um, Why is she saying Dave Navarro looked all hot after the fight, though? I don't, yeah, I know, right? Because kind of like, weird. Yeah. Eddie is, Etty is Perry's wife, right? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. first thing she talks about is how Dave looked after the fight. Yeah. Glowing. Yeah. Sweaty. Mm-hmm. Old. Oh. oh, apparently Jane's Addiction have issued a statement apologizing for the incident and have canceled Sunday's scheduled show in Damn Bridgeport, it. Connecticut. So they aren't playing tonight, which is when we are uh, recording this, 1040 a.m., uh, on Sunday, as of now, the tour is scheduled to resume Wednesday in Toronto uh, through an October 16th show in Los Angeles. Uh, okay, so let's see what the statement says from Jane's Addiction. Let's all read it together. Jesus Christ. Just. I uh... hope she didn't write it. <laughs> Might as well be in Sanskrit. Yeah, it's basically what I said. Perry had a huge yeah. bottle of wine with him all evening. Navarro sure. and Avery kept chatting with each other the whole show and seemed angrier than normal. Uh-huh. Everyone, us included, thought it was a bit a weird one. But yeah, it's just, they're just saying what we already know. Can you imagine your backstage just always being like described as well, it's somewhat angry, but not, <laughs> not a lot angry? Yeah, just... It seems wild. I, you know, I, it's nice to hear they're enjoying, you know, what they're what they do. Yeah, I am going to guess that, you know, I'm going to take your prediction for Oasis's uh, run of reunion shows. I'm going to say Jane's Addiction has five shows left Ooh. before they break up. Five right. shows, max is what I give them, and then they're just. I don't done know where all... you can set a line on that or anything, but. You no, know, what kind of line? Like a betting line? No, uh, I didn't know if we were talking cocaine. Oh, no, I mean, that might be part of the problem. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'm going to give that one five more shows, and then uh, they're done. Five more shows. Five more shows. All right, John. So, Sorry, Bridgeport. News this week came out. Warp Tour is ru- rumored to come back. Okay? So there was this uh, YouTube video uh, from Rock Feed. It was... It's a four minute and 50 second video, way too long for what he was trying to say, full of fluff. Uh, But basically what he's saying is from a source he has, doesn't name the source, that Warp Tour, I guess, is going to do a string of festival runs. So maybe, I don't know if that's two, three, four shows in different parts of the U.S. or different parts of the world. I don't know. But it sounds like it's a go. Live Nation and Kevin Lyman are going to put on this 
Warp Tour, I, I guess, in, in 2025. Pumped. So, I mean, I guess maybe we could play a little bit of the video. Maybe we should add it so yeah. we can get a little bit more context. I'm going to share my screen here, maybe. Share it. Share it. All right, let me know. Can you see it? I see. All right, I'm going to play it. <laughs> Jesus. It was founding all the way back in 1995 to its unfortunate end in 2019. Few have done more for rock music than the Vans Warped Tour, to say the least. Serving as a vital launch pad for some of rock's biggest bands to this day. His and shirt yes, makes my eyes Global hurt. pop superstars. Everyone from Paramore to Fall Out Boy to Sum 41. It sounds like he Blink chat GPT the to script. Few, and I'm only naming a handful including none other than Katy Perry, who also got her start on the Vans Warped Tour. So when things closed down in 2019, yeah. since that time, things really haven't felt the same. Of course, we have Spotify and social media, but there's no better way to discover a new band than seeing this massive lineup of artists going to a show and getting to see them in person. And so after that, a lot of bands really had a tough time kind of staying in it once warp tour went away and they weren't able to directly connect with those diehard fans that would go year in and year out to the vans warp tour so i've got some very good news for you the vans warp tour so according correct. to multiple sources will be making a triumphant comeback in 2025 and while things will look a little bit different next year i'm sure Couldn't many find a better picture of that guy huh? very very <laughs> excited here's what we know for those of us who were lucky enough to grow up attending Warp Tour, here's what we know, Oz and he does a history of Warp Fest. Tour here. So it was hold a on. Special time in music, jam packed mm. lineups. With there we go. Sorry. According to multiple sources familiar with the matter, Warp Tour will celebrate its anniversary with a series of festivals next year. When Warp Tour <laughs> returns in 2025, the Rock Festival will now be overseen by Live Nation. Although festival Ugh. founder Kevin Lyman is said yeah. to be heavily involved, a dynamic for pricing, from baby. Live Nation was not returned. It's so great for a number of reasons to hear that Warp Tour is coming back. Number one, especially for the bands, these upcoming groups are able to get in front of this big live audience and really grow their fan base. All right. So there you go. It's basically going to be a string of festivals. Again, don't know if it's going to be two, three, four, five shows. Doesn't sound like a full on Warp Tour as it's, we knew it. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's going to be a traveling festival like it used to be. Um, so I guess my question is, and I remember when Warp Tour went away in 2019, we had talked on the podcast um, back then, and I had suggested I think it would make sense if they did like a Lollapalooza type uh, show, but they did it in, you know, maybe just do four festivals, right? One on More the west. southeast and west. Exactly. So everybody gets a chance to go. I'm wondering if they're going to end up doing that. But... um my thing is, and I'm curious to know what you think. I think most people who grew up with Warp Tour, they're excited, but they're only excited because it's the name Warp Tour, right? It had Warp Tour has the nostalgia factor baked into it just from the name alone. But it's not going to be what it used to be, and I don't think we should expect that. We already have When We Were Young Festival, and I think it's going to be like a When We Were Young Festival, uh, except it's going to be, I'm guessing... It's going to be maybe four dates, and it's going to be spread out uh, across the U.S., uh, so everybody gets gets a chance to go. Um, my question is, John, do you think it's needed? Do you think Warp Tour should come back, uh, or what do you think of this overall? I think it's, you know, people are ready for it to come back for sure. So Yeah. Um, I don't mind that it's going back. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, I don't think it has to be exactly what it used to be. You can do it on a smaller scale. There's already plenty of things that do a, a warp tour kind of thing, just like a you know one off shows and tons yeah. of festivals like that, right? And there's ones that are geared towards pop punk and alternative music too. So I mean, they can kind of do whatever they want with it, which is exciting. Yeah, and I know you know warp tour always had this kind of vibe to it. Um, you know, there was a there was a lot of uh, good surrounding it. There was a lot of uh, like foundations involved with it and um, nonprofits. That's that's what yeah. I was looking for. Um, so what would be cool is if it does do the, like kind of like the when we were young fest, maybe over two days at you know at certain locations and just you get all of us pop punk punk emo kids, well elder emo kids mm -hmm. together. Um, 
and just have a different vibe. It's got to, I feel like it's got to set itself apart still from when we were young fest. Cause when we were young fest, isn't going away. No, so, but I mean, I think like when we were young, it can pull a lot of those nostalgic acts in. Yes. And, uh, but they'll also bring the new, new people along too. So like the, when we were young seems to focus mostly on the nostalgic acts. Whereas yeah. Warp Tour, maybe, maybe they'll bring the, you know, the old guys in to play, but they'll also bring the new bands up on tour to, for that discovery. That's what that rock feed was talking about. It used to be a great place to discover bands. That, that guy's mm-hmm. right. Um, but who knows if that's really, I, I don't know if that's necessary anymore for people to discover new bands at shows, uh, but it sure wouldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. I think if they come back, it'll be interesting to see how they set themselves apart from what's already out there. Because we already have Summer School, which is a, it's like Warp Tour, less dates, um, less bands. Then there's Sad Summer Festival, which is like Warp Tour, kind of the same thing as uh, the school one. But then we've got When We Were Young Fest, um, which is on a bigger scale. So I, I'm interested to see if Warp Tour does come back. How is it going to set itself apart? Yeah. That's what I want to see. So, all right, John, what else do we got here? I guess we can round things out with uh, Billy McFarland, uh, the, the mastermind behind the first Fire Festival, uh, is launching Fire Festival 2. Apparently, John, we have a date for Fire Fest 2025. But get this, there are no artists booked as of yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it says Billy McFarland. This is from Consequence of Sound. It says Billy McFarland continues to insist Fire Festival Two is happening, claiming in a new interview with NBC News that the event is set for next spring at a private island off the coast of Mexico. We oui, we. So, oui. so again, we're heading to a private uh, island. Epstein blindly. Island. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess he says Fire Festival is Two well, is there's hap- something going on there right now. That's true. No, that's true. Might as well put it to use. Might as well. Uh, Got to hose off all that cum and. Oh Jesus, John. <laughs> Anyways, McFarland says the Fire Festival Two off. is happening April twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. So we're seven and a half months away. We have a private island off the coast of Mexico in the Caribbean, and private, we have huh? we have an incredible production company who's handling everything everything from soup to nuts. Ooh. Um. There you go, John. The jokes write themselves, folks. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, so everybody remembers that uh, the first fire fest was a, a dumpster fire. Um, I, I, I can't imagine he's going to get very many artists to do this. Like, it's not going to be what he had before. There's just no way, right? Who's going to sign I up to do this? I don't know. I don't think this is going to happen. James Addiction just signed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna have to be those types of bands, um, dude. I, I, I don't ICP. think this thing happens. ICP, I could see ha- being on this. Dave Matthews Band, <laughs> no, Dave Matthews, no way. I don't know, dude. They doused people in shit before, so I mean, Fire Festival seems like you know the did... infamous bus shit incident in Chicago. Why don't I remember that? I, I, it sounds familiar, but please. There, I, it might remember. have been Chicago, it might not have been, but they pulled over at some point and were emptying their septic system and it landed on like a travel tour boat. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, is there any is there any uh, video footage of that? I don't know. It was kind of prior to the uh, era of everyone having a cell phone, so I don't know. Ah, uh, the good old uh, days. It would be grainy footage. Or, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that did happen. Ugh, gross. Um. Yeah, dude, I don't I don't think this thing happens at all. There's no way. It's set for April 25th, but it ain't happening. Mm-hmm. That's my uh that's my guess. No. We know what happens at Fire Festival. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. False alarm festival is what it should be called. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, John. John, we just did uh 42 minutes of podcasting after being mm-hmm. off for 4 weeks. I think that's good enough for now. All right. Um, we're going to get rid of that, uh, hosing off the cum line here. Yeah? Eh, maybe. All right. You know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what oh, the people oh, think. I'll start working on my resume. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. So thanks so much for tuning in as usual. 
Uh, guys, if you could, give us a uh, like. Give us a follow on Spotify and tickle. Apple Podcasts. A tickle, if you would. Uh, give us a five-star review. Those are always helpful. And thanks for the ones that are out there still supporting us uh, financially. With the uh, There should be a support the show link in the show notes. So if you guys are interested uh-huh. in that, uh-huh. it really does help keep this thing going. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for uh, hanging out. We'll thanks hopefully be back there. next week. Yeah. Always. We You're know always we can there. always count on you. All right, guys. We out. Bye.